This week on Maker Update, the Adam Savage soldering station, pigeon robotics, cat food control, glowing black plastic, giant LEDs, and the good kind of foobar. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're doing great. I've been keeping busy working on my cocktail machine for the upcoming Cocktail Robotics Grand Challenge, probably around July. Uh, I know it's a while off, but I got a lot I want to do with this thing, so I'm trying to get to work on it early. I got some work done on it yesterday, mocking up the design in cardboard and tape, and I felt a little insane putting it all together, but man, I love how quickly you can work in cardboard. I've got a great show for you, so let's get started with the project of the week. It goes without saying that it's worth keeping up with what Adam Savage is making on his YouTube channel, but this portable soldering station he made for his latest one day build is a particularly great match for this show. That said, the station itself isn't really the coolest thing about this video. As a project, it's really about Adam Savage showing you how we would make a quick Tom Sachs inspired plywood caddy, but along the way, you're getting all these great tips. Adam gives an aside on why he loves his portable soldering iron, why and how he powers it from power tool batteries, the adapter he's using to get 12 volts from a 20 volt pack, and then he moves on to plywood. Here he goes over plywood grades, when to spend more money on voidless ply, plywood versus luon, and what types of plywood make a laser cutter catch on fire. Long story short, come for the project, stay for the tips, but put this video on your must watch list. Now for some news. In a paper published in Science Robotics, researchers at Stanford University explain new work on understanding how birds use feathers and wing shape to control their flight. The interesting bit is that they learned this by creating this ornithopter with wings made from real bird feathers, and what they found is that there's a micron level texture that helps overlapping feathers adhere to each other to resist sliding beyond a certain point, minimizing air gaps in their wings. The research calls this effect directional Velcro, and they're looking at how to recreate the effect synthetically. In the meantime though, how awesome is this electro-bio-hybrid pigeon vibe? I mean, this leads to some kind of creepy territory, but you have to admire the idea. More projects. Becky Stern has one from December that I missed. It's this 3D printed automatic cat feeder. Becky's cat needed a cutoff time on when it could eat its food. This project opens and closes the lid over the bowl during certain hours to help regulate eating. To make it all happen, Becky is using an inexpensive Node MCU board, which includes an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip, but can be programmed using Arduino code. It also works off the same 5 volt power needed to get the servo moving, so it's a great fit. You can find the code, 3D print file, and excellent step-by-step -step instructions on Becky's Instructable. Charlene Gonda has a guide on how she made this seemingly opaque ring with lights inside that shine out. Inside the ring is a NeoPixel jewel from Adafruit driven by a Gemma M0 board and a small LiPo battery pack worn separately. But what really got my attention here is the special laser cut plastic that she used. It's made by a brand called ChemCast. You can get it from Tap Plastics and it has this unique ability to appear black but behaves transparently when light is shown through it. And as you can see here, even colored light will shine through it without the color of the plastic having an effect on it. Now for some tips and tools. On Instructables, Lone Soul Surfer has a guide on how to turn old phone batteries into little regulated power banks for your projects. The key to it are these little $2 adjustable step-up voltage modules that also include a USB port for recharging the connected battery. I wouldn't say it's the safest way to make a battery pack, but it's a useful hack. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got an interview up with tiny house builder Deke Diedrichsen talking about his favorite demolition tool, the Stanley Fubar. Deke also has a new book out called Micro Living that I picked up last week and recommend for anyone who loves tiny homes and cabins. If you need a really big LED, Part Fusion Electronics sells a 50 millimeter working LED for $75 on Tindy. It's a novelty item really, but it does light up and you can order it in different colors. The LED is cast in resin with brass rod used for the legs. Totally unnecessary, but you kind of want one, don't you? On the Raspberry Pi blog, there's a great video by Christopher Barnett on how to use a Raspberry Pi to control a servo motor. The Pi isn't an ideal choice for servo control compared to an Arduino, but you can get it done, and the script examples that Christopher links to can help smooth out any jittery artifacts. 
On the Adafruit blog, Gareth Branwin has a post that explores the idea of using a gradient infill pattern on 3D prints. The idea is to use more dense infill near the walls of your design and get looser towards the middle instead of a uniform density throughout the entire print. On a related note, I've been seeing more 3D print designs that abandon walls entirely and use infill as the entire structure. This TV remote box by All Jaws to Toric on Thingiverse is a great example. Instead of concealing all the cool wavy gyroid infill, he exposes it by setting the shelf thickness to zero. For the right project, it could be a neat technique to try out. Finally, for this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video going over the basics of working with and understanding stepper motors. You get to see one pulled apart and explained and get a better appreciation for the unique advantages of using one in your project. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. If YouTube subscriptions aren't your regular thing and you're not coming back here to check regularly, then get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes and video links emailed out to you each week automatically with a few bonus projects thrown in. A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.